Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. And thank you so much for joining me for our spring sew along featuring McCall Pattern Company. This is going to be a sew along that is geared toward the beginner sewist. I and McCall's both really want to help get people started in garment sewing. So whether you have never touched a sewing machine in your life, or if you're a quilter and you want to try making clothes for yourself, or you're used to making kids clothes, accessories, bags, either whatever it is, and you wanna try garment sewing, this is going to be the sew along for you. Working with McCall's, we decided to pick a pattern from their Learn to Sew for Fun collection. They have dozens of patterns there for you to choose from, and they all really, really break down the process of sewing a garment, starting from picking the fabric to the size of the garment that you're going to be choosing. And then obviously each and every step is laid out beautifully as well. So we're really just going to take what they already have in the instruction booklet and separate it out into eight videos. So the sew along is going to last for eight weeks. Every single Friday, we are going to post a video for the sew along. We have chosen McCall's 7405. It looks like this super cute dress pattern. It was important to me to choose a pattern that was easy enough for a straight out of the gate beginner, someone who's never like even turned on a sewing machine before, but something that was also really stylish, really cute, something that you would enjoy wearing and that people might even compliment you on, which is like the holy grail of sewing your own clothes is when someone's like, where did you get that? And you're like, oh, I made it. And they're like, what? You made that? It, it never gets old. This pattern features a loose fitting pullover dress that has neckline gathers. So kind of like a halter top. It has a back neck slit, which you can't see from any of this, but there's like a little slit right here in the back and then you tie this into a bow. And then it has hemline variations. You see has a belt and D has an elasticized waist. So there are several options obviously here for you to choose. I am going to be making, and I've gone back and forth, knee length maxi, knee length maxi. And just based on the fabric selection that I have, I'm gonna end up with the knee length, but I think the maxi is going to be stunning. For any of you that make that, I am like so jealous and I'll make another version of it, I'm sure. But I'm also going to add the elastic to the waist because that's just what's most flattering on my body type. I'm a pear shape, um, so I need waist definition. That instantly slims me and makes me look like 10 pounds lighter, but I'm also going to make the belt too. So that's the beauty of sewing your own clothes is that you can mix and match all of these options to create a garment that in your mind is like perfect. Also, when you go to the website, there are going to be two different size options. You are going to have four to 14 and you're going to have 16 to 26. But when you get the pattern, it's gonna be letters. Extra small, small and medium represents the six to 14 category. And then mm, medium, large, extra large, I'm guessing, um, would represent 16 to 26 size range. You're not going to be buying the size that you would normally buy in a store. When you are sewing clothes, you kind of just, forget about that. The ready to wear clothing industry has adjusted their sizing over the years to be smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas the sewing patterns have really kept the same 
sizing when they started making sewing patterns, which is why there's such a discrepancy. So don't be alarmed if you take your measurements and you're like four, five, six sizes different than what you buy in the store. That's totally normal. This is a forgiving uh, silhouette in that it's very loose and drapey. So you don't have to necessarily get it exactly right in terms of fitting your measurements. If we just get it close, the loose drapey quality of the garment will hide a million sins. So another reason why I picked this one. So pick your size uh, that you feel most like represents you. You'll see something that says size charts. So you're gonna wanna click on that if you're shopping in online. If you're shopping in store somewhere, it's always on, for McCall's patterns, it's always on this flappy thing. They're all right there. But you're going to take a tape measure and you are gonna measure your chest and you're actually measuring your high bust, which is not the apex of your bust, but right where your like armpits are, right along this line here. And you take a tape measure and you take that measurement and you write it down. Then you're gonna take your waist measurement. The easiest way to find it is to bend over to the side <laughs> And you're going to find that little area when you bend over that, um, like where you fall in on yourself. And that is going to be your waist line. So then you wanna take the waist, uh, take the tape measure and you wanna measure all around that area, write that number down. And then you wanna measure your hip. You're gonna go really low, like a lot lower than you think. You're not measuring where your hip bones are. You're measuring like the widest part of your butt. So if you have a bubble butt, it's gonna be low on your thighs. If you have like a flat butt, then it's kind of anywhere in that range. But you're trying to find the widest part of yourself because you wanna make sure that this is gonna fit all parts of you. And that's a part of you. That part of your bum is a part of you. So you're gonna measure that part and write it down. And then you're gonna compare those measurements to the size chart either online or on here. You, you can be in different columns of the measurement chart. That's okay. Just find whichever one, whichever size best corresponds to those measurements. If you are in between sizes, err on the smaller size. Like I said, it's a very forgiving pattern in terms of size. And then I'm also going to provide you with a couple of tips on how to alter the pattern to better fit your body. So pick a size, buy that pattern <laughs> in that size. Now we're going to talk about fabric. So I don't want to necessarily tell you go buy this fabric, um, but I do want to try and educate you a little bit on what each of the recommended fabrics are. Shally is going to be a very lightweight woven fabric. Woven meaning not stretchy. It's very, very lightweight, very fluid, very flowy, very floaty. Um, all of those lovely things that make a great garment. A lot of times it's made from rayon, which can also be considered a sustainable fabric. You know, it's not made from chemicals or anything like that. It's a natural type of fabric. And the downsides to Shally are that it's gonna be a little bit harder to cut out. When you put your scissors through the fabric, inevitably it lifts the fabric up a little bit and every movement that you make with your scissors, especially if you're not super proficient in cutting, is going to shift that fabric around and you're not gonna get a perfectly cut pattern piece. That said, again, this pattern is super forgiving. You don't necessarily have to have it perfectly cut out but if it's not perfectly cut out, then maybe some notches won't match up and it could be a slightly more frustrating process. So if you're an adventurous person and you're a patient person, by all means, 
try Shally. One more thing, they can be a little bit sheer. Since we're making a dress, I do want to point out, they can be a little bit on the sheer side. So enter at your own risk on a Shally. The next one is cotton knit. Knit is one of those things where if you put in cotton knit on a website, it's going to give you every kind of cotton knit fabric under the sun and there are a ton. There are a ton. But if you're at all familiar with, like if you've come from quilting or from bag making, then you might be familiar with some companies like Art Gallery or um, Cloud9. Some of those companies have knit fabrics made in the same prints as their gorgeous quilters cotton. Those knits are a really, really good option for this pattern they are going to be a little bit stable, a little bit, definitely more stable than a chalet or another rayon fabric would be. So you can also buy jersey, cotton jersey is a very common knit. Imagine like t-shirt fabric. That is gonna run a wide variety of weights as well. Try and stay away from anything that says tissue, anything that says like um, burnout would not be a good option for this. You're looking for a light to mid weight, somewhat stable, not a ton of stretch, like 35% uh, or lower cotton knit. Um, and that's just gonna produce a really cute, comfortable dress, right? It's gonna, you know, you don't necessarily need this stretch because it's like a looser fitting garment, but it's just gonna feel good hanging on your body. You know what I mean? The next one that they recommend is something called crepe. Crepe can be a lot like chalet in that it is really lightweight, floaty, drapey, all of those qualities, but it's got a little bit of texture to it. It's, it's definitely got almost like little bubbles in it. It tends to be a little bit more on the weightier side of a lightweight fabric. Those little grooves kind of stick to each other a little bit better, so it doesn't tend to be as shifty. And you can choose rayon crepe, you can choose polyester crepe, or some blend in there. Polyester is probably gonna be a little bit cheaper. So I do like crepe as an option. You're not gonna find heavyweight crepes that I know of. Uh, most crepes that you see online are gonna be lightweight and drapey, which is what you want. And then the last one that they recommend is something called gauze. Gauze is typically made from cotton and you're imagining like, a really light, light, lightweight linen kind of. Gauze has a lot of texture to it. It can be a, a little bit sheer, so you wanna watch out for that. It can be like tissue sheer, so be very careful when you're, when you're doing that. What I would recommend is going to your local fabric shop with your pattern in hand, seeing if they have someone who runs the fabric department and seeing if that person can point you in the right direction. The way that I learned about fabric the most was going and looking, touching, feeling, and, and committing those qualities to memory. I think all of those are really, really great options for this dress. And it's gonna produce something that is just really beautiful, lightweight, I've said this a thousand times now, lightweight, drapey, it's just gonna fall beautifully kind of like away from the body in like a natural type of way. Even if you're not making the elastic one, you still want something lightweight and drapey because we have all this gathering at the neckline. And you just wanna make sure that that gathers up nicely and then flows away across the bust beautifully like this one does here, so. Leave any questions that you have for me in the description box. I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. Next week, we are gonna be talking about choosing your exact size. So I know that we already chose a size range for the pattern size, but we're gonna be choosing the exact size of the pattern pieces that you are going to cut out. So we're gonna be getting into the pattern pieces. We're gonna be laying them out. Uh, doing some more measuring, cutting into the pattern pieces, and, you know, getting all of that part completely prepped. 
So I hope you'll join me here again next Friday for part two of our sew along. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye.